Boss, how am I supposed to film with this? Okay, so we talked about this before. Just It's fine. Do I need to put my head through here? No, we framed you out before we started ruling. Can I? I don't think my head's... I You're ruining the tablecloth, Cisco. Just... I have a fat head. Can you see me? Yeah, we shirt? know that. We framed according for that. Uh, no, I don't think I'm in frame. You're in frame, dude. Oh, gosh. No. Cut it. What is going on, you guys? My name is Cisco, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Team Cobalt Kinetics Banff M4 by G&G. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoy watching our content, show us some love by liking the video and ring the bell to make sure you get notified whenever we drop new content. We appreciate you all. So Cobalt Kinetics is actually a real firearms manufacturer based out of Utah, and they designed this model after the AR-15 and specifically designed it for competition style shooting. With that being said, you're gonna notice a lot of differences between this model and a lot of tactical ARs that are on the market. First off, you're gonna notice how long this gun is. With the flash hider, it's going to have an 18 inch barrel and the stock is actually a fixed position stock that is going to be the length of an adjustable stock all the way at its furthest setting. The next thing that you will notice is that this gun is completely made of metal. The upper and lower receiver are made of CNC aluminum. Even the pistol grip is metal. The only thing that isn't metal is the flash hider and some of the internal parts. So out of the box, the gun is gonna come with a orange flash hider, but g, &G included this blue muzzle brake that does match the stock. Please note, if you remove the orange flash hider, it may void your warranty, but more importantly, you may be breaking federal law. It is required to have an orange flash hider at the end of the muzzle of the gun. Lame. Starting off with the handguard, it is going to have four QD uh, sling points at the front and the rear of the handguard. It does look like M-Lock, but it is not. Traditionally, uh, competition shooters do not use any attachments on the front, and this will just be something to grab onto. Going into the upper receiver, there is just enough Picatinny rail space to mount an optic. It does extend a little bit into the handguard, but I'm fairly sure you're not gonna be mounting anything other than optics onto this portion of the rail. So you'll notice at the very top of the gun, g, &G has included their very sleek iron sights. And of course, at the very front of the rail, there is going to be the top and the bottom Picatinny rail sections. Like I said before, you're not gonna be mounting any accessories like a vertical grip, but at the bottom section, I do believe it is more for a barricade stop for you to get a more stable platform when firing. Going to the upper receiver again, you will notice that this does have a very aggressive ambidextrous charging handle, which is attached to a functioning ca uh, bolt catch. Ah, uh, where is it at? There it is. Moving down to the lower receiver, this gun does have a 45 degree selector which is very nice, very easy to activate, and it does have an ambidextrous magazine release. On the right side of the gun, the paddle is enlarged for you to make better contact with that magazine release. So on the left and the right hand side of the lower receiver, you will see Cobalt Kinetics trademarks, and on the right side, you will see the serial number, but on the dust cover on the upper receiver, you will see G&G's logo. You will notice that this pistol grip is very hefty. It is made of full metal and feels very comfortable in the hands, actually. It leads perfectly into the enlarged trigger guard, which shows the gold trigger, which reminds me of Kevin. What's that supposed to mean? Shut up. Okay. And the last part of the lower receiver is going to be this very aggressive magazine well. It is a flared magazine well, which will allow you to get a faster reload time when shooting competitions or if you're on the field. Moving on to the stock, it is one piece of CNC aluminum steel. I'm <laughs> steal my bruh, bruh. saying. Moving on to the rear, we do have a one piece CNC aluminum stock that is slid over the blue buffer tube and is secured in place with one Allen key screw right at the rear. Now, to install the battery, all you need to do is remove that Allen key screw and slide the stock off. That will expose the battery window at the top of the buffer tube. Now, this gun is pre-wired to Dean's, and the battery space is shared with the wired-in MOSFET and a Tamiya adapter. It is a little cramped in there, so you would be able to fit a 7.4 LiPo battery, a stick type, or a smaller 11.1 PDW style battery. So if you play around with the wiring a little bit and remove the Tamiya adapter, if you wire your batteries to Dean's, it'll open up some space and allow you to put a larger battery in there. And the last piece of hardware is going to be the Auto Drop Advanced Magazine. This is a very unique piece of hardware that is supposed to replicate the real firearm. In the real Banff AR-15, it will chamber the last round and eject the magazine. In the Airsoft version, it's very similar where when you fire the last round, the magazine will automatically eject. So the magazine does hold 90 rounds, and don't worry you guys, it isn't a proprietary magazine system. You can still use standard AEG magazines, or you can disable the auto drop feature if you don't want to use it. 
Now, going into the internals, this is going to be using G&G's G2 gearbox. This does have an auto cutoff feature that will restrict the gun from firing if there is no magazine inserted into the gun. And that goes for all magazines. Out of the box, it is going to be using a rotary style hop-up unit, which is very impressive from G&G. It also will be using a brass inner barrel. I'm not sure of the inner diameter, but this is a very big improvement from their aluminum barrel. This gun will also be featuring a 25K motor from G&G, and the gearbox does feature a quick change spring system. At the end of the hop-up unit, you will notice the spring there. That is to help push the hop-up unit against the gearbox, eliminating any feeding issues and helping create a better air seal against the air nozzle button. Having the longer barrel, you are expecting to have a higher velocity. So it does make sense that this gun is going to be shooting around 385 to 390 feet per second. And the rate of fire on an 11-1 LiPo is going to be around 22 BBs per second. As I mentioned before, this is going to be using G&G's G2 gearbox. They made a lot of improvements on this gearbox and some noteworthy parts are going to be the double O-ring air nozzle and the double O-ring cylinder head, which are going to improve the air compression. Overall improvements that they made to the gun are going to be the quick change spring system and the 25K motor. Also included in the gearbox is going to be G&G's electronic trigger unit and their inline MOSFET. Both are going to give you great trigger response and increase the longevity of your battery. Also, it is programmable to change full auto into three round burst. The Team Cobalt Kinetics BAMF M4 by G&G is retailing for $550 at airsoftgi.com. All right, enough talking. Boys, let's go. We're shooting this. Ah, there he goes off again. Well, let's hurry! Hey, hey, Kevin, can you can you help me? No. Oh, damn it. All right, guys, we're out here at the range at about 200 feet. The first thing that I do notice of the Cobalt Kinetics Banff is the weight. It is very hefty, but it is very balanced. Honestly, it's right here, the pistol grip. See how level it is already, including that scope. Uh, honestly, I can run this with one hand without getting too fatigued, honestly. Mm, let's just give it a shot, shall we? Oh, yeah. What I will say is that it is very snappy. That trigger response is... And I am using uh, 3.0, so it is hopping at that 200 feet um, at that man-sized target over there. Uh, the accuracy could be a little bit better, but, you know, it is a stock inner barrel, so... Um, I would recommend putting in a smoother, tighter bore, maybe like a Prometheus or an Action Army or Mad Bull. That'll definitely increase that grouping. But it's able to get out there very easily. Okay, let's get a little bit closer. <clears throat> so, like I said before, I think the scope does complete the look of this gun. It is very nice. I'm using the stand-end magazine just to show that you can use regular uh, M4 magazines, like I said, in uh, the table. Um, Right about 150 feet now. This should be fairly easy to get. Oh yeah, see full auto. Hmm. That's actually a really good rate of fire, honestly. That 25K does perform very well out of the box. The spread on full auto isn't the greatest, honestly. But, like I said, it is a stock inner barrel. And bucking. Three drops. There goes that Banff mag. But I do believe I have the auto drop feature cut off because I do not want to have it hit the ground, you know, damage that reason. Hmm. Let's bring it a little bit closer. So, like we said before, it is designed to be a competition style gun. So at the longer range, it was performing very great. Uh, I did have it zero back there, so I am compensating a little bit <clears throat> for the close range. But I do believe in competition style shooting that directing the gun is definitely a part of, uh, you know, using the firearm. So I want to see if the weight is going to hinder that a little bit. Not that bad, actually. Like I said, it's pretty balanced. Um, I'm, very, I'm able to direct the muzzle very easily. Okay, let me bring it a little bit closer so we can get a little bit more of a dramatic, uh, like, angle. <clears throat> so, I do have to say, it is very easy to uh, adjust the hop-up, especially since the bolt locks back. Uh, Rotary saw hop-up unit, like I said before. 
that magwell is actually very nice. And here, let me eject that. Something to notice is that the uh, it's actually flared, so it's uh, easier to insert the magazine, and it helps guide it in place. So let me put that down to a one. Um, honestly, I suck at exit, but uh, it is very easy to direct if you were to point shoot. It's very accurate as well. Overall, I like it a lot. The G2 gearbox, they have gone uh, and done a lot of work, as I said previously. So, magazine is out and it will not fire, even if a lot of There is a lever on the inside of the gearbox that the magazine presses on for it to activate. So when you do it, I'm really impressed with that trigger response. Oh, and like I said, I deactivated that uh, auto drop feature, but overall great performance. I do like it a lot. Uh, let's get back to the table. All right. So after my first mag impressions, stay. <laughs> The gun actually shoots very, very good. The trigger response is very nice. And like I said before, that is from the electronic trigger unit and the uh, wired in MOSFET. The rate of fire is actually really good as well. That is contributed to the 25K motor. Uh, I was able to fit a AK style 11 one stick type in the buffer tube, but it was a very tight fit. The Tenergy 7.4 LiPo that I had in there uh, was a very tight fit as well. So you're gonna wanna play around with some batteries. Overall, the construction was very heavy, but very solid. There's no wobble in this gun at all. I was concerned that the one screw holding in the entire stock would be an issue, but honestly, it locks into place perfectly. All right, you guys, if you like the video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you haven't already, thank you, Boaz. And don't forget to ring the bell to get notified of every time we upload a new video. We are uploading every Monday and Friday, so stay tuned for that. Our next video is going to be the Vanquish Bolt Action Sniper Rifle. I know we've been doing a lot of Speedy Boy and Milsim guys, but for all you sneaky boys, we got you covered. Very sneaky.